All right, so another lockdown interview in winter this time. Um, how are you doing, first of all? I'm doing all right. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm a, I'm a little bored. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not quite the same as the last lockdown because obviously you were enjoying 28 degrees heat and you could go <laughs> to walk every time. But yeah, I'm doing all right. My, uh, my dog has had more walks than I think he cares for. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing all right. I can't grumble. Uh, we've got a garden. We've got a, a, a relatively spacious house so I can kick out a little bit. So I, I can't complain. Good, good. Um, we've ended up doing this at quite a convenient time because I think on it was Wednesday when I asked you if you had in, any information on what was going to happen and you said you didn't. And then yesterday we get the announcement that they've got a provisional restart date, which is a good start. Um, it's obviously still dependent on what happens with lockdown, but is that kind of a, um, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel, I guess? You, you kind of you have a possible start date now to aim for? It's, it's at least nice to have something on record. Um, we were kind of left to our own devices a little bit. I mean, there was a survey that went out about three or four weeks ago by the league as to what would be our preferred start date. I think one of the options was the 5th, one option was the 12th, and I think the, the, the last was the 19th. Um, obviously, the 12th allows us to build in some form of fitness thing because that's, that's I think, every manager's concern at the moment is that the lockdown happens on the uh, the lockdown freedom happens on the third, and then we've got seven, eight, nine days to get prepared as, as the best way possible, and also get people tuned in with their head to their feet again. So there's a lot to do in a short space of time. But yeah, you're right that we we just want to be playing football, and we've we've missed a lot of games over the course of the last few weeks, obviously with the lockdown. So the likelihood is we're going to be Saturday, Tuesday, which, as I've said before, I've, I've always really enjoyed. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to to really use the squad that that I believe in. So it's good to have have it down. We don't we don't know that that's going to be the date. Obviously, that's going to be led by the government. But at least the league have, have given us the opportunity to have something in writing so that we can at least prepare for something. Yeah, um, I think by the twelfth, if it, if that is the start date, that will be, then be six or seven weeks since our last game. So that's pretty much a pre-season sort of time frame how you mentioned fitness how do you go about getting players conditioned right when you've got lockdown up until a week I mean it's difficult because obviously every everyone is um at slightly different stages with their fitness like I I, I back us fitness wise uh, I always have done we had a really good pre-season where we had a lot of games but the boys worked hard over the course of the sessions that Aaron and myself put on and obviously Wersey's now joined us um and I don't think it's any fluke that when you look at the large proportion of our wins, they usually come in the second half. And okay, um, sometimes that's down to us being poor in the first, but I think more importantly, um, we we certainly have the fitness levels to not give in, and that gives you an opportunity to go and win games. Um, so, I mean, we, we've done little bits uh, in, in terms of talking to players about fitness and, and what they should be concentrating on, but a six, seven week turnaround time, as you say, from the last game, it was more appropriate that the boys focused on elements that was going to serve them a purpose. So some people needed to bulk up, some people needed to slim down, some people needed to work on mobility, pyrometrics, like all these different attributes. So there was no point us throwing a blanket over everyone and saying, right, we're all going to sit on a Zoom and do a Zumba workout for the next hour. Uh, so we've, we've been speaking in, in uh, checking in with the boys quite regularly um, and they've been checking in with each other as well which is great um, and it's survival of the fittest like as far as I'm concerned it's on them like there's there, there can be no excuses there's nothing else to do other than look at your fitness levels and work on what what you can work on so uh, I, I, I trust the boys to come back in in really good condition um, and then hopefully we'll be ahead of the curve and all we've got to then focus on is is, is like I say, retuning the mind with the feet and, and getting the feet to the ball as well. Uh, and from there, we, we, sh we should be fine. Do you think that the, the different ways that different teams will handle this could have a really big effect on when, whenever games end up restarting? Some teams flying out the gates and others being a bit slow? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's twofold. I think one, if you've got a good group of lads, you can really focus on the, the spirit of a team. Um, a good managerial friend of mine in, in Dodsey over at uh, Binfield, we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago that you can utilise this period to 
galvanise and, and get lads speaking about things that they wouldn't normally speak about because obviously we're not really talking about football so the fact that they've built a relationship albeit virtually and by WhatsApp and all that stuff has been really good and we've put a couple of nonsense things in which have uh, which has kept a, a bit of the, the humorous side alive um, but that's a really important factor like if, if if you can stay a together group in a moment that is like just complete separation uh, it will only serve you in good stead the, the other side of the game is yeah it can absolutely be a, a real advantage this because there are there are some teams which uh, have let's call them slightly senior players that, that might be carrying a little bit more weight than they want to and have they got the mindset to really be going out and, and doing the bits without the training or someone on at them to do it. Uh, and I've certainly watched a couple of games uh, just before lockdown that would suggest that there's, there'll be some teams that might struggle in the opening weeks. I just hope we're not, we're not guilty of that. But again, the responsibility with that lies firmly in the hands of the boys. Like if, if they come back in, in, in real fine form and, um, we know that breaks can do people good. I mean, look at the way Brad Wilson came back in, into this this year's setup, and uh, th there's a few players that will benefit from the break. The likes of Lewis Hayden, who had an injury, Daryl Wallers, Aidan Lewis, Dunny, obviously, um, even Dallimore was carrying a, a shoulder injury, um, and it was it was basically rock paper scissors between him and Daryl, who played against uh, Moneyfields, Magnetsfield, sorry. Um, so yeah, it, we, we, we're hoping that we can turn this into an, a, a, a positive. Um, but that said, ask me three games in, uh, then I'll have a better idea. Well, that, well, that's a big thing. That injuries have been a problem so far this season, and uh, it gives a chance, I suppose, for a lot of those players to get fit and 100 percent ready to go. Um, and Danny Vickers as well, who we haven't seen yet. It means that he'll get more games this season than you expected. So I imagine if you're looking for a silver lining, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. And it is a silver line. And look, you're absolutely right. We had a series of, of injuries to really important players. And that's not diminishing anyone else's importance. But if you look at kind of positional importance, the likes of Dunny, the likes of Lewis, Harrison Cliff picking up a suspension, DeAndre was injured. That's four of your centre midfielders gone. God believe we relied on, on Cookie and the likes uh, in that position and even dragging in Dylan to do a, a position that he's not really done before, albeit did it well. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's certainly a silver lining, to use your phrase. Uh, the, Danny Vickers, absolutely, uh, he's had his operation, which was successful, which was great. He goes to a physio, I think, tomorrow, which is, which is good news, just to, to see how the rehab's coming on. But he's already walking about. Uh, he's got to get up, I think it's every hour, to do something just to make sure the mobility's there. Um, but I, I can't wait for him to get in a basin stone shirt. And I know he can't either. So the, the fact that we'll... Hope we will get stronger with him coming in, no doubt about it. Uh, it just depends when we can't rush him back. He's he's been through a lot over the course of the last few months, so we need to to tread carefully with him in the same way that we do Dunny. Um, but certainly with Aidan Lewis, with Lewis Hayden, Daryl, Sean Dallamore, uh, and there are others amongst the squad that have, have picked up little knocks. Um, so so we can certainly use that to our advantage, definitely. You talked about Brad Wilson coming back and starting the season well. And there, there are a few players who, for me, have, have, who were here last season, have come back and uh, hit in higher levels this season so far. Is that how much of that is the difference between playing generally in a winning team compared to a losing team, and how much of that was just their natural progression? Um, for you? I think it's, I think it's a combination of all the above. In truth, uh, you look at the likes of those that were with us last year. So you look at Harrison Cliff, Scott Armsworth. Uh, Hallahan towards the end, uh, Cookie obviously. I mean, Cookie and uh, Scott Armsworth in particular um, that were with us last year, who still had good seasons, but the the level that they've turned up this year has gone through the roof. And I think that is partly their own work, and they've had a a, a year with us. And obviously, Cookie's played the level before, but but Scott, it was Scott's first year in men's football. Um, but as I said to you before, Scott has. Scott's had a really hard road through football. I mean, he, he got released at, um, from Fulham at the age of 18. Um, and I've seen that before. We've had players in the past that have come and they've, they've kind of got caught up in their own kind of hype, really. Um, they've been told since they were young that, right, you're going to make this level, you're going to make this level. It's come that down to there is a bit of a, a hard hit. So Scott has come back in and he's, he's been tremendous. Like he's been really, really good. 
Um, so we've been really pleased with him and, and, and Cookie again. I think he's probably one of our most played players this season. Um, and, and he's he's added to his game what we wanted to him to add in terms of goals. Um, you've got Everest, who I think in the early stages of the season was, was playing his best football that, that I think he's played. And I've had him for kind of seven, eight years now. So, yeah, I think there's a, there's a combination of things. But I think the, the biggest thing, um, particularly with Brad, is that they're playing amongst better players that have a real win, a will to win. Um, and they're not having to do as much as they were. I mean, Harrison Cliff is a prime example of that. I mean, last year, the man was doing the amount of work of three or four players. I remember coming off against Highworth and being annoyed with other players in his position about the level of work he got through. Because the only reason he went through that level of work was because they weren't doing it. Um, which is a testament to his character, but he has a big, much bigger skill set than just running about and being a pain. Um, so even even he has, uh, has, has has found being in a, in a slightly better side, he can concentrate on what he's really good at. So there, there's there's loads to like with the with the boys that have come back, um, and and even when you look at young Lloyd Snell, uh, I mean the the development of that kid over the course of last year has been just phenomenal. Um, we've always known he was a good player and, and he's an intelligent boy and he's, a, he's got a really good family around him and a great head on his shoulders. Um, but to be a bit part player last year to now, OK, he hasn't played uh, probably the amount of games that he didn't want to in truth, even at, even at his young age. Um, but he's a genuine real consideration now. And I've got, I've got, there's no concern about him. So all in all, I mean, I've, I don't know if I've mentioned everyone there, I probably have, but they've... I think everyone has come back in and, and, and made a real statement that they want to be here. And that was a big thing from last year. We didn't want anyone that was just going to rock up, uh, take the minimal money that we can offer, um, wear the kit and wear the tracksuit around town and, and, and kind of glorify it. We, we wanted players that wanted to be here and work hard and, and be part of a, uh, a wider idea and a bigger project in actually taking this club forward, not just existing. This club has existed for far too long, and it's 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 about time we had a, a set of players that really believed in the um, in the idea of the club, in the ideas of myself, Aaron, and Wersey, uh, and and take it forward. I was um, I was listening to you on the podcast, the From the Sidelines podcast, and um, you were talking about it's not just the players, but for you, it was the first time as a coach that you've had a really tough year. Um, how 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 did that kind of help you as a manager and what what have you what can you use from that to take into this year i think it's given me uh, certainly a, a level headedness about it all um not that i got carried away with ever with wins it doesn't come naturally to me that anyway um but i think being able to analyze is a lot easier when you're losing because it allows you to pick up on points that, right, well, I know that could be better. I know that could be better. When you're winning, it always feels like you're trying to pick apart something that is still a proven process and, and continuing to work. Like we, we were five or six games, I think, unbeaten at the start of the season. And it was kind of difficult to detail what was uh, working really well for us, what wasn't, because even, the, even our vulnerabilities became our strengths. I mean, you, you look at the way in which we were keeping possession in the first half of games um, and nine times out of 10, that would drag their defence out a little bit. They got a little bit more confident. They give away the ball and just with our sheer pace, we could go and attack. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of kind of different attributes that come into the, to the, to the mindset of uh, a manager when you're going through a tough period. But the biggest one is being able to to really analyse and 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 find out what the what really makes your team tick and what motivates them and what gets them going. Um, because at the end of the day, you, you can only I look at myself first. I think is the big thing. If we lose, I'm not going to blame anyone else until I've had an intrinsic look at what I've done or what I could have done better. Beyond that, I will help try and play, help players develop. And then it's their responsibility to go, OK, I get that. Or I'm going to ask a question because I don't understand. But it's up to them to implement it. If they don't implement it, then I can't work with them. Or I can't work forward. I think last year, with the youthfulness of the group, it was difficult to kind of get some of those messages through. And also because the games are coming so thick and fast, we didn't really have time to rectify anything. So the opportunity to work with, I make no claim, 
got better players this year um, has given us the opportunity to focus our, our time on, on slightly different things and a, more of a cohesive unit rather than individual aspects of everyone's game. Um, but it was a tough, like I said in, the, in that podcast, it was, a, it was a tough time period last year. Like I, it was um, self-doubt comes into play. Am I good enough? Can I do this? Can I do that? Um, but even in listening to, to Mark Schwarzer, who came on a, a call with us uh, with, the, with the kids the other day, he was brilliant. He was fantastic. But the common theme was this relentless determination of defining moments as singular events. So once one thing has happened, it's not going to make a difference for the next thing. So it's just making that a timestamp and going, okay, well, as long as I can learn from that, then I can move forward. So the big thing for me was learning. And last year gave me a real, I say opportunity loosely, because I don't want to glorify what was a, what was a terrible season, but it certainly allowed me to, to learn about, um, players in in dark moments and uh what are the characteristics of players that that need you need to kind of motivate a team where the chips are down and what types of players are really important in a team where your team aren't playing particularly well and formations that suit that environment like there's there's it was it was great for me and also it's great for some of our players like you look at again to, to name a few the kind of scott armsworth and harrison chris of this world they with the season being expunged they basically had a free hit of 35, 40 games at seven, Southern League level, which at their age is, is no mean feat. So um, whilst it was a disappointing season and a frustrating one, and, and sometimes, I mean, Stacey, my girlfriend, will, will tell you I wasn't necessarily the greatest company of a weekend when I come away with another loss. Um, it, it, it makes for, for a lot better viewing when, you, when, when, we're, we're, when we're winning. It's a lot easier for that <laughs> <laughs> but I've learned a lot. That's the big thing. I've learned a lot, definitely. Good. Um, so we you've said about the start to the season and, and that it's been a good start. And when I talked to you in summer, you'd say you wouldn't set any targets other than get to the points that you know where this is going. Oh, get no, to the yeah. point that you got last far season. Off. <laughs> yeah. six, six, well, that's it. We're on 16 points now. We've got 18 last season. If I ask you that again, are you still going to say we've got to get to 18 or is the start of the season? Yeah. You, yeah. I mean, the, the parameters have changed slightly. Um, don't get me wrong. We're, we're, an ambi- we're an ambitious side. We know, we know our level when it comes to kind of budget and all that stuff. And every, every team bleats on about how their budget's not big enough. And I, I can join the brigade there, but we're all in the same boat. Um, we've certainly got a good group that I believe in. We've got a group that believe in each other. Um, they're committed. I mean, I mean, I'm getting seven days left, right and centre, which is... A testament to the quality of the team. Um, I mean, I, I, I think I can count on one hand how many seven days I got last year, and they're all for Zach Robinson, who wasn't hard anyway. Um, so it's it's been um, it's it's been a great start, and that's the operative word. It, it's a start. We're seven games in; it doesn't mean anything. Um, but I think with the with the make of the boys we, we've got in this year, we're, at, at worst we're going to be competitive. Um, and the fact that these boys really get on with each other and like each other and want each other to do well, um, it's, it makes for a, a, a decent little recipe. So what, what comes in two, three, four, five games, I don't know. Like, I, think, I think you can probably judge our form on, on 10 games from a league standing. Um, but ultimately, this, this period is going to put things in a mixer again because you only have to look at the Southern League website and this team signed this player and this time signed this player and this guy's gone over. So it's basically a, a, a clean slate as far as I'm concerned. I don't want to give it the Sunday league, it's nil-nil shout, but um, it's kind of what it feels like a little bit. We've, we've got to go in with fresh eyes now and leave no stone unturned and make sure that we are at our absolute optimum because what went before could be completely different this year. We're, we're, we're under no illusions. We've, we've got to go and do it again and put the work in. Um, but I trust the, the, the characters in, in the group and certainly the quality. Yes, and at the moment, I assume, as, if, as they're hoping, they do start again on the 12th, that they'll be looking to still get in the full complement of games. Do you know if, if they're sort of planning any contingencies in case this lockdown goes on further and that becomes impossible? We've certainly had notification that at current stage, the league won't be extended. Um, and I don't know how far they can really extend it. Even, don't get me wrong, I don't think any of ours are going to be picked up by England or Gareth Southgate just yet, but it is also bookended by a, by a Euros competition going on. 
Um, so they are limited in the capacity of, of taking the, the, the games any further than um, they can do currently. Realistically, I think we're going to be Saturday, Tuesday for the, for the large part. I think even when you look at the last three weeks that we've missed or four weeks that we've missed, I don't know how many games would have gone ahead anyway because of the rain. So we've, we've still got that to, to come into consideration, particularly going through the December and January period. I think one rumour that I have, have, have heard, which would be probably sensible, logistically a bit of a nightmare, but um, I think there is a, a, a potential shift of um, basically doing the fixture list again and placing the teams uh, that are furthest away on Saturdays. So at least we have that at our disposal. But obviously, I think they've done that at the start of the season anyway. Um, so how much they can move, I, I, in all honesty, I, I don't know. Um, but as you know as much as I do, sadly, and we're, we're in the hands of the government, not the FA. I mean, the FA have at least come out, or the league have at least come out and said, we're going to try and start on this date. But until the um, good old Boris uh, sorts his life out and tells us what's actually going on, then uh, we'll have a clearer, clearer picture. All right, that's good stuff. Um, that's everything I have for today, so thanks very much. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Thank you.